The miracle prayer, also known as Saint Anthony's Prayer, was only something that our family did. Our babysitter, who was essentially our grandmother, Titi, she taught us this prayer when we were little if we lost something. There's a longer, more formal version that's like, oh, Saint Anthony, guardian of, you know, very long with a bunch of religious words. But the one she taught us is a little more fun, and it goes, Tony, Tony, turn around, something's lost and must be found. I kid you not, every single time you find the thing, it works. But I did some research, and it's not just Christianity who recites this prayer. This seems to be a prayer that is mostly derived from the Judeo-Christian practitioners. Archangel mm. Shamuel, there's a prayer to him or her or them about lost things. Muslims perform the dua, also known as the summoning prayer to Allah to recover lost things. And there's also a Hebrew prayer to recover lost things. And I even know some more new age, generally spiritual people who do similar incantations to recover lost things. So the question here is, does it work? And it seems to be something that a lot of people do as a way to almost shift their reality into one where you oh. haven't lost your item. There's a reality where I'm eating sushi at Nobu with Rihanna. There is. And Rihanna has a reality where she's eating sushi at Nobu with me. Rihanna, hit us up. We know you watch this show. Yeah, dude, come on. Sounds like a lot of us are losing things. Well, yeah, we're constantly losing things. I mean, we've got hoarder mentalities for the most mm -hmm. part. Everyone collects too much stuff. We're always in a rush. There are a couple scientific theories that could explain what's going on when we do an invocation and then find the thing that we haven't been able to find before we did the invocation. Really? A bunch of researchers have talked about this. And first of all, we know that like positive mindset changes everything. So a lot of people say that already being in the right mindset is a critical step towards finding the thing. And taking a moment to take a breath and like ask for guidance, if that calms you down, it could even be placebo effect. So there's like a very obvious reason that that might help. Furthermore, having a calm state of mind like helps you rationalize and recall things better and also trusting or having faith that yeah. you will find what you're looking for can help you focus on the task at hand. Some could even say that this is a simple case of manifestation. I think that's kind of what it is for me because I learned it when I was little from like a very magical woman and the first few times I did it, it worked. I've always just had full faith that it's gonna work. So now for the skeptics, a prayer or shift in vibration or mindset could actually be the causal factor in a quantum jump that then causes you oh. to shift into the reality where your item isn't lost. There is a woman named Maureen St. Germain. She explains it in a way that is dimensional. So say you lose something in one dimension. She says that you simply travel to another dimension where the thing is not lost. And she says, first of all, to not get frustrated frustrated and to instead ask the question, what's going on? Because then you're kind of signaling to your higher self and the universe that you're curious and open to finding out what's going on and finding your lost item. And she says, then it kind of shifts your vibration into a mindset where you're more aligned with the fifth dimension where your thing is not lost or where mm. your thing is found. Everything's vibrational. So if you say something, you kind of are like unlocking a channel or placing yourself in a reality. If you keep repeating in your head, like this thing is lost, I can't find it, I can't find it, I can't find it guess what? You're not gonna find it. it. Freaking lost. Conversely, if you open your mind up to being like St. Anthony or whoever you're asking for help, even if it's just yourself, I'm open to finding this. It must be found. And if you believe that it'll be found, you're already setting yourself up to be in a multiverse dimension where that thing is recovered. Another woman, Cynthia Sue Larson, wrote a best-selling book called Reality Shift. And she talks about the same thing, how to use quantum physics to recover lost items. She says that it's the simple method of just focusing your attention on what you lost, and that changes your brain. This is research from UC Berkeley, by the way. UC Berkeley. Have you ever heard of quantum coherence? No. Quantum coherence is like essentially what allows a plant to know that it's gonna take in sunlight, photosynthesize, and grow. A being's ability to understand mm. how it is meant to shift in its own universe and reality. So it's like why, how birds migrate? Yeah, it's a being's natural ability of finding the best possible path for all options available. She says everything exists in a superimposed state, meaning this thing right here is here and also not here at the same time. And this plays into the many worlds theory, which says that there are a lot of parallel universes where my keys are with me 
right now. And then there are other parallel universes where my keys are lost, impossibly lost. That means there's a parallel universe where I've got a million dollars. There's a parallel universe where you're driving a Lamborghini. So it's the mm. same thing with finding your lost things. So there's a chance that by focusing your attention on looking for the objects and receiving them casts a wide net, then you can move into the reality that has the object that you're missing. So essentially the prayer is, I, I think people get squeamish about the word prayer and yeah. God and anything that has to do with religion and rightfully so. But <laughs> yeah. a prayer can also be interpreted as a meditation or even a spell or an invocation or an incantation where you are aligning with a certain reality where you want something to be true. Even doing like the little clap and the dance I think has something to do with it because you're kind of showing the universe like I'm enthusiastic about this. The only difference and I think the only reason why people would be kind of like sketched out by it is because you're using, you're praying to like an actual name and figure. Right, you're praying to Saint Anthony. This is mostly for yeah. Christian religions. They pray to Saint Anthony. Here he is, someone lost a child. They pray to him, he's here. He is returning the child. That's pretty good. So, Saint Anthony prayer. Do you think it works? Yeah, I know it works. I'm sure if people really knew that it worked, they would try to start businesses with it and charge a finder's fee. Your beliefs kind of channel your thoughts, and your thoughts lead you to the ocean. And if you're thinking bad thoughts, you're going to end up in a really polluted ocean. But if you're thinking good thoughts, you're going to end up in a really good ocean. So, do you think? I've never really thought about this. Do you think we can use the prayer to find? items that weren't initially ours? Maybe. Like, could we use the prayer to find the lost city of Atlantis? Atlantis, Atlantis is must lost. be found. Yeah. So let us know if you use the St. Anthony prayer, if you believe in summoning prayers, and what you think the explanation might be. I'm Sam. I'm Lucy. And thanks, and thanks for, for watching, watching Conspiracy, Conspiracy Central. Central.